Here's a worked out example in a fairly complicated worked out example. I would never ask you to do such a big example by hand, but you should be able to see right away how we can do this in, say, an Excel spreadsheet. All we have in this table in the first column is the observation number. So these are the I's that we're going to be indexing. We'll see that there are exactly 17 uh, observations in our sample of points. So we have over here that N equals 17. Now, the next thing that we're going to have to do to calculate the x bar, to calculate the mean, is sum all the values for all the observations. So here, what we're going to be doing is taking a sum of this column. So 7 plus 3 plus 12, and so on. And when we find that sum, uh, when we finish our calculations, we find the sum is equal to 169. So to calculate x bar, we're going to take a fraction of 169 over 17, which equals 9.941. The mean has two properties that, that I'd like you to know. The first one is that the sum of the deviations of each observation from the mean is 0. Let's see what this is all about. If we are going to be calculating the mean in this tabular form, the next step after uh, the first thing that we're going to do is make a new column in our table. And in that column, we're going to store xi minus x bar xi minus x bar is the difference between the data value, each data value, and the mean of the set of data values. So in simple terms, it's just 7 minus 9.94, which is why we get minus 2.94. Over here, xi is 19. So what we have over here is 19 minus 9.94. And we do that for all of our xi's, for all of our observations. And if we took the sum of this column of numbers, we'll find that the sum is equal to 0. So we find when we calculate the sum of xi minus x bar, we'll always find that equal to 0. What that means is that there are just as, there's just as many uh, deviations above the mean or the weight of the deviations above the mean is equal to the weight of the deviations below the mean. Because when we sum all the deviations together, we find they're equal to 0. And that is an indication that the mean is somehow in the middle of our distribution. There are just as much, there's just as much deviance to the uh, above the mean as there is below the mean. The second property that we're, that we're interested in is the fact that the sum of the square deviations of the, uh, from the mean is minimized. So um, that means that this equation is the smallest possible value that we could get. So if, if instead, if we had put another value in instead of x bar, when we added this up, we would find some larger value than the one that we actually get when we use x bar in this equation. So in order to calculate the sum of the squared deviations, the first step is we had the xi minus x bar. Those are the actual deviations calculated. And then we're just going to square each of these numbers. So 2.94 squared equals 8.65, 6.94 squared equals 48, 2.59 squared, and so on. So this column contains the square deviations. And when we sum this column up, we end up with the sum of the square deviations, and that equals 642.9. And the assertion, or this property of the mean, is that this 642.9 is as small a number as you can get uh, when calculating deviations. Now, if we were to replace x bar in this formula with some other number and recalculated this column, we would get some number that is guaranteed to be bigger than 642.9. Let's look at a quick example here. Imagine we have 1, 2, 3, 4 data values, and their values are 1, 2, 3, and 2. So here is i, and this is x. What is the sum 
of xi minus x bar. Well, first of all, x bar, we have to calculate x bar equal to sum of xi over n. So that's going to equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 2 over 4. So 3, 6, 8 divided by 4 is equal to 2. So now let's calculate the xi minus x bars. These are like that. So 1 minus x bar is minus 1, 2 minus x bar is 0, 3 minus x bar is 1, and 2 minus x bar is 0. And if we were to sum up these values, we would get minus 1 plus 0 plus 1 plus 0 equals 0. Next, let's look at the sum of xi minus x bar all squared. So to do that, we're going to square the, the deviations. So we have 1, 0, 1, 0 again, just because 1 squared is a 1, 0 squared is a 0. So the sum of these deviations, again, now is going to equal 2. The sum of the square deviations equals 1 plus 0 plus 1 plus 0 equals 2. What I mean by the fact that this is the smallest possible value of square deviations is that if we were to instead calculate this without x bar but some other number, the sum of this column would be even bigger. So instead of x bar, let's redo the calculations. x bar in this case was 2. Let's instead redo all the deviations away from 1. So in this case, we have xi minus 1. And we're going to have xi minus 1 squared. So xi minus 1 is 0, 1, 2, 1. And when we square it, we'll have 0, 1, 4, and 1. Now the sum of xi minus 1 is the sum of this column, which is 4, not equal to 0, because we are not using the mean anymore. We're just using some randomly chosen number, 1. And the sum of xi minus 1 squared is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And we see here that 6 is greater than 2. So we, no matter what number we choose here, we will always get the smallest possible squared, sum of squared deviations when we use the mean as this number. If we use any other number, the sum is always going to be bigger than this sum of 2.